In this series, we're taking it back to the basics. And on this episode of Shocks 101, we'll be talking about how shock body diameter matters in your shock choice and basically how to determine how thick of a shock you actually need. Shocks are a hydraulic system, so the larger the body or larger the piston size, the greater the amount of potential dampening force that shock has. Dampening force is just a fancy word for saying how effective that shock is at absorbing impacts. The greater the dampening force, the bigger the hit the shock can take. In a perfect world, you want to run the largest diameter shock you can run so that it can provide more than adequate support without being tuned super stiff, which basically ensures you have great small bump compliance, but the big bump support you were hoping for. That said, lots of times our budgets don't allow for that. So how do we determine the bare minimum shock we can get away with for our use cases and application? The first and the biggest thing is how you're using it. The harder and particularly the faster you like to drive off road, the bigger you, the shocks you need. But if you're only driving on the street, chances are you don't need to throw the thickest john you can get on it. Another factor that's equally important is the weight of the vehicle, both sprung and otherwise. The heavier your rig is, the bigger the shock you're probably going to want to run, as if your shocks are too small, they're going to have to be tuned pretty stiff to be able to give you any sort of support. Additionally, if you're running really big axles, really big wheels and tires, you have a lot of unsprung mass, you will need a lot more shock to control that. If you've ever had the unique displeasure of driving a rig that has too much tire relative to the amount of suspension, you know it can dribble, wallow, and be easily unsettled just driving on the street. Last but not least, we're looking at suspension design, but more importantly, motion ratio. The greater the motion ratio or the ratio between shock travel and wheel travel, the less efficient your shocks are at dampening suspension events. So a solid axle rig might be able to get away with a slightly smaller shock than something with IFS, even if weights are the same. But if you want the formula on how we determine exactly how much shock you need, stay tuned to the next episode of Shocks 101.